Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Brenda here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Flask REST Plus Swagger UI. So I'm gonna show you how to do a few things in the Swagger UI that you may be wondering how to do. Um, and the very first one is going to be how do you turn it off? So turning it off is fairly straightforward just in case you don't want it for whatever reason. Like you have a public API and you don't want people to be able to go to a Swagger page to see it. Instead, it is a more private API and the users are supposed to know how to use it already. Then all you need to do is set doc equal to false here when you instantiate your API. So when I do that and then I try to refresh my app and go back to the page with Swagger, it tells me not found because I removed the Swagger UI from my API. So if you want to get rid of it, that's how you do it. So let me just leave this doc as false here just in case you want to download the code. The second thing I'll show you is how to add the JSON editor in the UI. So let me go back here and I'll go to my language call. And if I click on this example value, then I can see this JSON object here that I can modify in any way that I want. Well, if I didn't feel like writing JSON directly, let's say uh, the payload was expected to be more complicated, what I can do is I can enable the JSON editor for the users so they can just type in what goes into each value from a easy interface. So let me show you what that looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the configuration up here. So app.config. And then what I'm going to say is swagger UI JSON editor. And I'm going to set that to true. So now I'll have the JSON editor working. So keep note, this is what I currently have. This is what the editor off. And if I refresh the page and go back to that post, you see it looks different. So now what it's asking for is basically just the language. I don't have to create the actual JSON object myself. I'm just supplying the value. So if things are more complicated, it will have other fields there that I can just fill in using this text input instead of having to write the entire JSON object myself. So I don't have to worry about leaving out uh, quotes, for example, and having the JSON object be invalid because I'm not dealing with that. I'm only dealing with the value. So if I put C++ here as a language and then try it out, then it tells me language is added. And when I query, the git, I see C++ has been added there. So pretty straightforward stuff. That's just something to make it a little more user friendly if you choose to do so. If you have users who aren't sophisticated, then perhaps you don't want to allow them to use pure JSON objects. Instead, you want to restrict them to only modifying the value inside of those JSON objects. And the last thing I want to show you is how to move the endpoint. So right now I have the Swagger UI on my root and that works for this. But if I had something else on my root, or let's say I had a regular web app that people can visit in their browser. And then also in that same web app, I had an API component, then it probably wouldn't be smart to put the Swagger UI on the root. So what I'll do is I will show you how to change that. And it is changed by using blueprints. So what I need to do is I need to import blueprint. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to beneath app, but above API, I'm going to instantiate a blueprint. So I'll call this blueprints and then blueprint. And then the first part is simply going to be the name of the blueprint. I'll just call this API. That's a pretty decent name. Then I need to pass in underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore. And then I need to supply a URL prefix. So this URL prefix will be the new endpoint. So in this particular case, I want the URL prefix to be API. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate API from Flask REST Plus a little differently. So instead of using app, I'm going to use this blueprint because if I use app, then it has no idea that this blueprint actually exists. So I'm going to change this to be blueprint. And because I changed this, you're probably wondering, okay, well now how does the API know about my app? And I'll show you that in just a moment. But what I'll do is I'll also add a doc endpoint. So let's just say documentation. 
And this means to access the Swagger UI, I'm going to go to slash API slash documentation. So I'll show you that in just a moment. And then so my API is configured with my app. What I'm going to do is I'm going to register the blueprint on my app. So app.register underscore blueprint, and I'll pass in the blueprint. Okay, so now by doing that, I now have the API on a different endpoint along with still having the rest of the routes be the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here's the root. The root is now not found. So if I go to slash API slash documentation, just like I mentioned, and if I can spell it correctly, then I should be able to see it. So documentation, and we see the Swagger UI is here now. So if I go to try it out, I still get the same response. Um, difference is now that everything is prefixed by API because I registered this API blueprint, but Flask Rust Plus takes care of that for me automatically. So pretty simple stuff to use. And those are probably the three things that uh, people are kind of wondering about with the Swagger UI. I mean, there's a lot more you can do, of course, if you're familiar with the Swagger, but those are three basic things that people wonder about. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this and Flask Rust Plus using Swagger, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.